Good morning. This is Tom's Radio Room Show, number 332. Are you having a good day today? Well, yesterday I didn't have such a good day. Not a big deal, but just one of those things that's kind of annoying. I um, went to check out a piece of equipment that is battery powered, and it didn't work, and I was pretty sure it had some batteries in it. I opened up the um, battery compartment and saw things similar to this. Yep, leaky batteries. Big problem. And so today I want to hear a little bit about leaky batteries. And definitely not an expert in this area, but I did a little research and try to provide some information and kind of uh, spark your imagination of things that might happen to your equipment, and maybe you should do a little research, etc. So anyway, this device was definitely uh, suffering from the leaky battery syndrome, and uh, the contacts were pretty badly corroded. But I was able to clean it up pretty good, but it, you know, of course it won't be like brand new and, you know, a lot of the uh, chrome plating on the terminals had been eaten away. So the contact won't be as good, but, you know, it still works. And you can see from these pictures, um, you can have some pretty uh, bad effects of bad batteries leaking. And the thing that really surprised me is that these batteries were Duracell. They were Duracell batteries, plus they were had been put in the radio as brand new, and they had only been in the radio for probably five months, maybe. Five months. And theoretically, the item, it was a radio, the radio was turned off and therefore maybe not drawing any power from the batteries to draw them down. Well, unfortunately, nowadays a lot of electronic devices use some backup power from the battery to retain, uh, for instance, your memory uh, locations or maybe it has a, a clock function which this one had a clock function so the clock is running so it's drawing power and for, from what I've read this condition occurs as the battery is um, getting discharged so that it doesn't have a full charge which implies that in devices that um, are not drawing any power when they're off, this condition is less, I say less, likely to occur. But uh, unfortunately in this, con this particular radio, it um, does have a clock function, so it was using power. And apparently start draining those Duracell batteries to the point where they started leaking. And if we go to the... Uh, a alkaline battery Wikipedia and we come down here to leaks it says uh, all alkaline batteries and this is talking about alkaline batteries and this they were alkaline batteries are prone to leaking potassium hydroxide which is a caustic agent and will eat your uh, battery contacts and if it leaks too much, it will actually get into the electronics and destroy the device. I have a, I bought last year a brand new little lantern and um, for emergency purposes. And so I wanted to, you know, leave the batteries in it. And I put, not Duracells, but I put in some Radio Shack batteries. They were D-sized batteries. And they just leaked all over the lantern. 
to the point they leaked down into the electronics because this particular lantern had some electronics, making, making it unrepairable. Total loss. Used it once. Total loss. So you want to kind of keep in mind these little facts. And another thing is, uh, another thing that will accelerate this problem, um, excuse me, is high temperatures. And that, I think, is what caused the problem in my radio, is that it's summertime here, and in my office, it gets what I would call extremely hot. Um, typical temperature after noon till about six o'clock at night, even with the air condition on, although it doesn't get in this room very good, uh, it'll get up to 86 degrees, which is kind of toasty. And so the higher temperature will accelerate this battery leaky, uh, leaking phenomenon. So the key is, if you're not going to use a device for a while, take the batteries out. So what I did yesterday, I went through everything I could think of that I'm not using on a at least a weekly basis and removed the batteries. Now, the downside of removing the batteries, as I said before, a lot of these devices nowadays need the battery to uh, save memories or any kind of setup. Uh, if it happens to the clock, to save the clock time. So when you remove the batteries, that means you have to go through the setup process. Also, some emergency devices, such as flashlights and lanterns, you'll want to have them ready so you can just turn them on when you lose power. So that's kind of the disadvantage of taking the batteries out. So what I've done on those type of devices, my, my flashlights and my lanterns, is I've, I've got uh, one or two that are very inexpensive flashlights. I think I paid a dollar for them or something. And so I don't mind leaving the batteries in there. And if they uh, leak and destroy the flashlight, not a big deal. And then what I can do in case of emergency, I'll grab those flashlights and hopefully they are working. And uh, use those to load batteries in uh, my other better flashlights and stuff like that. So kind of a trade-off there of when do you want to take things out. And, it, and there's so many things you don't think of. Like this morning, uh, when I was getting ready to do this show, I thought, oh, you know, I got, um, I've got, i got a two or three nice digital cameras, which I bet have batteries in them. And sure enough, I opened them up, and they had batteries in them. But luckily, there was no leakage. And they've had ba batteries in them for quite a while. So I was... Um, really lucky they had, didn't have any leaks. So anyway, the gist of this show is um, to remind you to not to forget to remove batteries on devices you don't use that much. Additionally, since heat is a driving factor to this problem, is anything you store in your vehicles, you should remove the batteries. Uh, again, you know, you, you might want to store a flashlight in there and then, you know, you want batteries in it. Well, do like I do, you know, buy a cheap flashlight. And so if the batteries leak, not a problem. The other thing is to regularly check them to see if they're starting to leak. Because quite often they will give you signs of leaking before they damage anything. So you can pull those batteries out, throw them away. You know, clean up the area in case some of uh, the potassium hydroxide has gotten onto the terminals and get it cleaned up. Now, I did find a site this morning that it's kind of interesting. Um, about, here it is, the Butterfly Mom. You know, that's what's great about the Internet. You can do a search, a Google search, for instance. You can come up with some pretty interesting website. But here's here's a website for hints about ladies, I guess. And shows what happens if you are had some leaking batteries. And then 
down here it shows some interesting facts. Now, whether these facts are 100% correct or not, I don't know. But anyway, it says, fact, 83% of consumers believe batteries corrosion is harmful to touch. And it says, no, it's not harmful to touch if you, you know, or, you know, clean it off right away. It's not going to burn you. And uh, here it says, 57% of consumers keep a flashlight ready for emergencies. Yep, that's me. Uh, more than half of consumers have experienced battery linkage. More than half consumers have experienced battery linkage. So it's in quite a common problem. Okay, here's some myths down here. Myth number one, batteries only leak after they are left in the device for too long. More than half the consumers believe this is true. Faults and realities can leak at any time. Any time batteries can leak. And it appears from what I've researched that the less expensive batteries, you know, those five for a dollar batteries at, you know, Kmart, they tend to leak more readily because the manufacturer hasn't, you know, spent the extra money to seal the battery. But as in the case of my radio, it had Duracell batteries that were less than a year old and it leaked. So not always true. But I have found in general, like for instance, when you get uh, a cable box and you get a um, remote and it's got a set of batteries in there that are some, you know, real cheap knockoff batteries, those have leaked on me several times, several times. So I typically take those and I just throw them away and I put some some Everettis or some Duracell batteries in the place. Here's another myth. I like this one. Storing batteries in refrigerator or freezers help prevent linkage. 71% of the consumers believe this is false. False. The way batteries are stored has no impact on the likelihood of leaking. Well, I don't totally agree with that, but maybe there's some truth there. And the reason I didn't agree is because I think high temperatures can cause batteries to fail. But what I've also read, the batteries really don't fail until they're starting to get weak, until they've you know, had some drainage of their power, and they, that's when they start to leak. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's true, not true. It says some batteries, chemistry, are more likely to leak than others. That's kind of what I was saying about cheap batteries. And it says, true, not all batteries created equal. Uh, energizers are sure to protect your device from damaging leaks. Guaranteed. Although, what a hassle that would be to have to send in your device that, you know, the energizers leaked in. So, anyway... That's, uh, that's kind of the uh, show for today. Um, again, I've, I've updated my web page, um, and I'm posting news, news things on it every day. I still don't know what's wrong with this uh, HF band conditions indicator. It doesn't seem to be updating, but this one is working fine. You can see it's updated till today. And look at here. The solar flux is up to 152. I think I better go turn on my shortwave radios and see if the uh, band conditions are working. Anyway, that's the show for today. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hey, join the group and subscribe. That way you can set up your YouTube to send you a message when I post a new video. Isn't that cool? Well, what the heck. Bye-bye.